Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. It's back to this season's Top Chess Engine Championship. As I said in a previous video, season 20 is weird in so many ways. 23 rounds are out of the way, or actually 22 to be exact, in the Premier League. And with many wins, we also get to see the games ending with a checkmate. In round one, there was a checkmate in two games out of four. In round two, we saw another checkmate. In round three, one. In round seven, one checkmate. In round eight, two. The next mate happened in round 11 between Komodo and Stoflace. And the list goes on and on. Some checkmates are far more spectacular than others. I'm trying to find a game that is... Doable. And I think this one is exactly what we need. It's the game of round 21 between Leela and Stoflace. Leela, this side of the board, starts from this position with the use of an eight move book. What we're looking at is some concoction of the Queen's Indian. But to see how exactly this pitch emerges, we're going to do what we normally do. So let's come back to the very first move to see where these come from. Knight of three, knight of six, d4, e6, c4, b6, g3, bishop b7, bishop g2, bishop e7, castles, castles, and after knight c3, c5, and d5, with takes, the engines are on their own. We're not looking to check out if this specific line of the classical variation is fair. It is far from it. If you have been here before, I explain the most likely reasons for this occurrence. This is the only way to increase the number of wins, and this is exactly what we are witnessing. With takes as a first out of book move, you can immediately see this side of the board looks far superior. This pawn on d5 is probably worth three pawns right now. He's extremely powerful because his presence on this outpost hinders all basic development from stoveflakes. If you want to get to this pawn, you need knight a6, knight b4, and even this will not be enough. e4 or knight h4, and this pawn on d5 is unshakable. A solid control in the center is an 80% prerequisite to score a win. d6 by Stoflace lets to e4, and one move you don't get to see by humans is this move executed by Stoflace. This is the move we're talking about. The engine throws a pawn into the mix, does this look like a blunder from an engine that can make fun out of our best chess players on the planet? There are a few moves Lila can go for, but to understand what this pawn of it does, it's actually not a very difficult concept to understand. With Lila going for this pawn in particular, this pawn is now exposed, and with Stoveflace breaking up Lila's center control by taking. This game moves into the next phase. Looking to attack the knight, got Stoveflace to reciprocate the attack on this knight. It's an eye for an eye thing. If you take and take, Stoveflace would get a very good deal out of this opening. A4, something like knight d7, bishop f4, and Something like knight f6, the rook being forced back, arrests this guy in the center, and Stoveflace could not have asked for a better position. Let's see what happened when this knight came under fire. The arrow retreated, Stoveflace did the same, and with the knight hitting the rim, Stoveflace introduces this move. It stops the knight's access to f5, but how strong is g6? If you attack the rook, rook e8, 
something like queen d2 and if you now charge after this bishop bishop back to safety knight d7 and the game will carry on coming back what happened after g6 we saw knight c4 Stovlis pushed on with this guy to stop the knight's access to the bishop and this is what you call feeling the pressure Lila is pressing and Stovlis is defending a4 led to this time of discovery Lila opts for this bishop response and is in a way encouraging or challenging Stovlis to trade the bishop to the knight can you afford to do this and why if you know the why we can answer all the other questions too if you swap yes the pawn comes off but with a queen moving away from d8 and with the knight and bishop on c4 and d2 respectively what is stopping Leela from arresting this guy on the rim grab this guy with the knight this bishop is in a way forced back chase after the queen and if you back off the big lady where she was or to where she was there is knight c6 takes and takes and this continuation would be very promising for Leela. any ideas what happened here stoveflays went for a bishop move okay but this is how far he went Leela rejected the trade via this bishop repositioning Stoveflays pursues the bishop and this is what we saw here with the attack on this bishop in the diagonal on the queen side Stoveflays has bishop a6 but the engine bypasses this line of play by choosing to protect this bishop using the rook the problem with this type of arrangement if you like is what followed Lila eliminated this pawn and it would have been perfectly fine if you take take and take and because the rook on e1 is covered if you grab hold of this bishop Stoveflays would fall apart so this line of play does not work for Stoveflays and this is the reason for not pursuing it the engine got the queen to move out the bishop also retreated and what Lila wants to do is to try and scoop up this rook that is locked in on f8 for more options Stoveflays has this is what the engine calculated best to execute rook b1 led to the knight to come out and with Lila advancing this pawn Stoveflays opts for this bishop repositioning it stops bishop h6 and will not force at least one of the knights to step into f6 he had no reason to keep the queen on this outpost and went for this repositioning how strong is this move and are there any clues so Flays began to breathe here he attacked the knight Lila gets the knight to come back to familiar waters and because of this type of response Stoveflays is desperate to try and find a way to get rid of this guy in the center with the knight returning to f3 Stoveflays repeats this bishop move and is now looking to have this guy removed Lila has one two three four five ways to cover one is 93 2 is knight g5, 3 is knight back to the rim, 4 is queen d3, and 5 there is queen e4. Any ideas what Leela did? <laughs> this is what the engine played. Leela's allowing this pawn actually to fall. If you go on to eliminate this pawn, we're coming back to our previous point. Leela's center is now destroyed. So why is Leela allowing this? the first place and what are we looking at in this specific case is that remaining 20% of the equation we mainly see this in engine games engines allowing the center to go maybe done for a specific reason 
Whatever that reason is, it will need to work out in their favor. If this pawn comes off, you may try this pawn push. If you take and take, these two pawns on the queen side become unstoppable. You can stop one, but not both. Knight of six leads to this attack. And if you try this remedial course of action, queen b5, rook b7, and what is there to play? Okay, bishop f4 is what you need. If knight e4, this stove flies back into the game. And can the engine stop Leela's attack? Can you fish out the move of the day if this picture were to emerge? This is the move you're looking for, guys. Arrest the rock. Get the knight to jump into g5. Get the rook to become active. But with this guy falling, everything is exposed. The rook on b7 has nowhere to go. And these two bishops are in full control of the board. If you hand over the exchange, if you chase after the knight, rest assured, when the knight reciprocates the attack on the rook, you may just want to give up here. This rook on b7 has nowhere to go. Okay, let's come back to see how the engines played it. Everything we showed or interjected started if Stoveflace gets rid of this central pawn. The engine does not remove this pawn, but this is a pawn that went. Leela doesn't take, but with the opening created on the rook, Leela went after him. The rook escaped to the sixth, and via this knight jump, Stoflis trades the bishop to the knight. Okay, let's backtrack just to see why this knight needed to come off. If you go for this move, go for this attack, and should the queen step out, once you arrest this guy, getting the rook to back off to safety gets you really nowhere. Knight back into c6, and if you take and take, this bishop on g2 is the key to everything. Knight e5 gets you in with this attack, and if the queen backs off, takes, takes, and this move to c7, and it's really game over. What on earth do you do here? Rook b8 doesn't work, and rook a6 is worse. If we, well, can we figure it out? This is what we need. And with a brand new queen emerging, it is sufficient to say it is game over. Coming back, I hope this explains why the knight was removed to the bishop. Knight c7 led to this knight maneuver. The bishop came under fire and with takes and takes, for this ingenious intermediate queen response, only the knight and pawn are saved, but Stoveflays has no game. At best, we saw this attack on the rook, but Lila is not worried. She picked up the rook, Stoveflays did the same, and what happened next is beyond human comprehension. The most obvious type of human move is to get rid of this knight, which may still be winning, but Lila discovers a far more stronger response in this position. Lila grabbed hold of this guy and creates an auto two-pronged attack. In this position, you can only save either the bishop or the knight. If you get rid of the knight, when the bishop comes off, queen takes is the only answer. It saves both the rook and knight. But is it strong to save the game? Bishop e4, this attack on the queen. This check, king g7, and I guess with this incentive, forcing the king to the rim is not going to cut it. In with a check, king h5, this takes here, queen c7 to try and get the queens to come off, and this is what you need here. Grab hold of the rook, runs into this mate, and let's hear it. Checkmate. Okay, this is one variation of many. 
coming back after queen a5. If you get rid of this knight, when the queens come off, this knight also goes, and we have a turnaround in how this game ends. It's total quality, and no engine can win, given this picture. Coming back, let's see if the variation Leela went for was any better. She removed this bishop. The knight was also rested. And with this bishop moving out of the knight's raider, Stoffles chases after the queen. Queening with a check, got the king to hit the seventh. And this variation is very similar to what we saw earlier. Rook b8, king to the rim. This check followed. The king was flushed forwards. And not queen takes in the center, but something is equally stunning. Can anyone see it? Was this check? With the king flushed further forward, Nida invades the queen into this outpost. The king found this hole. And from here, we're dancing into a mating net. If this knight was not on the first, Bishop g2 would be an outright mate. Leela returned the rook to the first, but he's still unable to get rid of this knight. Stoflays is on his way out, but never forget about the strength of these monster engines. Because of the proximity of the kings, Leela too can get checkmated. Blink here, and you will miss all the action in the making. Stoflays is an extremely tricky engine. This is what he came up with. And you tell me if this is a brilliancy or an outright blunder. Spend a few moments to figure out if this is thumbs up or thumbs down for Stoflays. It's both actually. In a way, it's a blunder. So let's sound this. But this is provided you know how to play it. It's all down to how you play it, really. Get rid of the rock, and this is how you get checkmated. Can you see how, guys? In with this check, the king is forced west, and this is what we're looking at. Let's hear it. Okay, checkmate. Wouldn't this be something to witness if this was the case? In the past, engines would not see this continuation. They were far weaker and couldn't solve basic problems. This is back in the early 80s. Some engines like Fritz, Shredder, and the King, which was the engine Chessmaster used, we're able to solve many position endings, but today 95% of engines will not have a problem solving what you see here. So in this position, one wrong move gets you done. Don't be one of many who will fall for it. Leela retreated the queen to the first, the queen came under fire, and with the big lady squeezing into this outpost on F4, why this attack, Stoflace is looking for revenge. H5 was the beginning of the end. If you take this pawn, there are two ways to checkmate. One is queen f5, and two, this check using the bishop. And let's hear it. Checkmate. So when this pawn made it to the fifth, Stoflace hands over the rook to the bishop, and with Stoflace rolling this guy, the knight came off. Now, if you're looking for crazy moves, check this one out from Stoflays. He came in with this reckless response. The queen takes with a check, and with Stoflays closing the gap, a mating three is now on the cards, irrespective of your own ability to find it. Even if you are a very beginner, spend a few moments to try and work it out. Let us show in case you need a push. Queen e4, the rook is removed with a check, the queen is captured, and this is what you might call a very close run. 
If this pawn on h7 was on h6, and Stoflace was to move, this would have been a stalemate. With Stoflace having no other move, after h6, this is how Lila checkmates Stoflace, and let's hear it. I think this is a checkmate. Eh? It's really painful. If only engines could feel pain. In this year's Top Chess Engine Championship, just like last year, we have witnessed a sizable number of checkmates. This one, in fact, may not be as spectacular as other checkmates using knights or pawns. But this is besides the point. Checkmate is a checkmate. And this is what we want to see. It all comes down to the, I guess, very opening. And I'm sure many would not like to see an engine starting the game up with a relatively strong advantage. I can fully understand the reasons why this is done. And if this is done to avoid certain problems from arising, so be it. Things are always changing, but you never know what's around the corner. Round 22 is out the way with three wins and a single draw. The Stockfisher Zero game of this round led to a checkmate, leading a game against Scorpio, locked in a mate in 90 moves, but we never got to see it all the way to a checkmate. The last decisive game from round 22 between Ali and Stoflace also ended in a checkmate on move 62. The usual suspects lead and the difference in points between the top three is three points. Many more games to follow, so until soon everyone, your chess puzzle are here and whatever you do, you know what's coming. Have a great year ahead and put safety always first. <laughs> <laughs>